Uh, welcome back, this is the Clay Golem, and this is our Foundry VTT um, version 11 series where we're making the Dragons of Stormwreck Isle uh, adventure module. Uh, we have got the Clifftop Observatory we did in the last video. We have got, now got that completed, Seagrow Caves and the Compass Rose. That leaves us with just one um, major location to sort out which is Dragon's Rest. So that's what we're going to do in this video uh, and we should in theory be able to get Dragon's Rest all done in one go. So if we go over to our scenes we can see the ones we've got here. We want to create a new scene. Uh, this is called Dragon's Rest. Whoops, can't spell. That doesn't help. Dragon's Rest. Create that new scene and of course we're going to want to uh, play around with all these things. So first of all, our background image we want to use for this, uh, Shipwreck Isle, into our maps, and we don't actually have that in, so I'm going to choose File. Don't want my monsters, but I have got my uh, my maps over here. And if you remember, I had two versions of the maps. Um, I have got my Dungeon Master version, so my Game Master version of them, which has all the icons and stuff on it. We don't want to use that for players because uh, it gives away some of you know where secret doors are and things like that. We don't want that. That's rubbish. So we are just going to use uh, this one here, the player's version of that. It's called Dragon's Rest uh, in navigation. Um, I think it's okay to say that all players can see this um, because uh, they can navigate back. They're going to come back to Dragon's Rest repeatedly, so uh, I don't mind them seeing it. They can always come back here which is fine. I'm um, going to leave it as uh, Dragon's Rest as the navigation. Uh, we've got a background image. We don't need to worry about colour, etc, etc. That's all good. So let's save that first of all and just pop over and have a look at that. I can right click, I can view scene, right click, activate scene, whichever way I want to do that. Um, obviously we haven't got players in so I don't need to be the active scene. I can just look at this at the moment. All right, so what I need to make sure is I've got the adventure in the other window. So you yeah, won't be able to see that, but I've got that up there so that I can keep an eye on um, what is in these various locations. And of course, I've got my DM version of the map as well. So quickly, should have prepared this instead uh, beforehand. Just clicking on to Dragon's Rest so I can make sure what these map locations are here and where they are. And the first thing we want to do is to put in some of our um, our journal entries on here. No, it's not. That's not true. The first thing we want to do is sort the grid out, isn't it? Let's get that grid. If we uh, if we zoom in, we can see that we've got this big grid here, and then we've got the small grid. So we need to align those up. The joy that is doing this. I mean, to be honest, it's not that difficult now that we've uh, we've you know we've uh, we've done it a few times. So let's resize that grid down there to as small as it can go. Uh, remember the purpose of this, so we're going to click on our grid configuration tool, shows them nice and red which is great and we want to align these smaller squares up with these bigger squares. Uh, it's a bit easier to do it down here where we can see um, those a little bit uh, better. So uh, just a reminder instructions here, our shift and mouse wheel to change the size of the various, um, change the size of the map. So it's the map behind that we want to change. Uh, and as you can see, it's going to take a little while. So let's uh, let's try 1.5 and let's see how that does for us. Uh, and we can just use the arrow keys to see how that maps up for us. Currently looking at this square here, we clearly need to make that map slightly bigger. Uh, on, let's uh, yep, do that. Oops. Put my grid tool back on. Pop that over there and make this slightly bigger again. Now I didn't notice what the grid size we used for the other ones are, or rather I haven't remembered between videos, and it might be that actually these maps are all the same grid size, and that might have been a, a smarter way to do this. So we look like we're pretty well lined up here, but you can see it's starting to drift, so we still need our map grid in the background to be slightly bigger. Let's just pull this back in here, and we're getting really close now. That looks, that looks pretty good. Uh, if we move over here, let's see if it's still aligned on the other side. Not quite. It's out off a little bit. Let's just put that up a little bit more. And again, just the arrow keys to realign that. So, nope, it's still not there. 
bit more. Uh, perhaps get that as far as 1.7. So I'm just looking at this number here, the image scale, 1.7 there. Lining up this square here looks pretty good. Um, but it drifts off over there and it drifts off over here quite considerably. Okay, so we've clearly not got this right. Not even close, anywhere near as close as I thought. Let's jump to 1.8. Uh, and then, uh, whoops, keep moving that back. And then try this once more. How far off is that? It now looks like our background image is too big. Um, you can see we don't actually fit in here, so we need to bring that down again. And this is really quite finicky, isn't it? Just, you know, we're constantly trying to change it to get it to fit. Uh, background image is still too big. I think jumping to 1.7 was a bit of a mistake there. Bring it down some more. Maybe 1.65 was a bit closer to what we wanted. It's getting close, it's getting close. Uh, so it's still bleeding out, still a little large over that side. Does that weird little jump every now and then just to confuse me. Let's uh, move up, center that a bit more. Uh, okay, looking good. So we're looking fine here. Move all the way over to this side. Yep, this is looking good. Move up into these chambers. That's looking good. So 1.65 I think is probably the correct number on this. It's very, very close, even over here. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to mess with it forever. Uh, that's good enough. Okay, let's save that. Brilliant. So we've got our grid done. Uh, now, with regard to lighting, what do we want to do here? Now, most of this is outdoors. Oh, is it? It's not really, is it? Uh, this is cliff top by the looks of it. So we've got pillars. This is going to be open to the air. This is within the rock itself. This is all within the rock. So I think what we probably will do is leave this lighting as global lighting uh, for now. Um, so let's do put on global illumination, at least for now. That's fine. But I do want token vision on uh, because we don't want people just wandering around being able to see everything and anything. So we'll leave that on. Uh, and for ambience, um, we've put a little bit of light rain on a few times. I might put that on again, I think. For this adventure, the island, it's just off the coast. Uh, a continual um, drizzle or heavier rain is, I think, that's perfectly normal, perfectly natural. It, it, um, and it's it's got some good continuity between the scenes. This is a wet island. Um, doesn't have to be. I can do whatever I want, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, so we've got a grid lined up. Now I want to put on these journal notes so that I know what is where. Uh, so in here, this part here next to this statue, this is known as A1, which is the path and uh, monastic cells, as in, when I say monastic cells, what they mean is these are sleeping quarters and things um, just along here. So we put that in there again. I didn't save it, did I? Classic mistake again a1 it would be the one with the longer title uh path and monastic cells i don't want a journal entry update the map note there we go so i'm going to leave that here somewhere where i can see it quite easily uh the next one we want to do is to put one up here uh, which is a2 and uh, let's just check what a2 is called it is the winch house Okay, so again, um, create a map note. Don't need to create a journal entry. We just update that. And I'm going to put that just outside of the actual house itself so that we know that that's the winch house, but it's not in our way. Uh, our next one is this area here. Uh, again, just going to put it outside. And I think this was the kitchen. So this is A3 kitchen. Now remember, I'm not putting details in the journal notes here because it's all in the adventure, which I've got open on the other page. Just doesn't seem like that's adding any value for uh, for me to copy and paste everything in and create everything in here when I've got the adventure right there. Definitely, definitely would be doing that if I was making my own adventure and I was creating my own encounters. Just put it all into here. Um, and of course, I could choose to do that anyway, especially if I'm going to make changes. Uh, I did mention before that um, when 
I run this game, uh, or rather this adventure, chances are this is going to be after they've done the um, part of the Fandelvin adventure, and they'll be coming here to collect a particular item, in which case they will be slightly higher level and I will make adjustments. At that time, yeah, I will make adjustments to the monsters and potentially update some of these encounters so um, and mix it up a bit. Uh, in which case, I might use journal entries for that because they're bits that I have changed. I want to rewrite them. Okay, last one up here. This is a five, which is the uh, the temple uh, of Bayamut. Again, create that, update the map note. All right, so our map is ready to go. That's pretty good. Nice and easy. Uh, if we're using it as global lighting, then it's not an issue, is it? Let's uh, grab our uh, our player character, our test person, and pop them in here. Uh, and again, I like to do this just so, uh, yep, they can see everything. Um, remember, they've got line of sight on. I don't have a problem with a village like this about them exploring it the first time. They're going to be able to see pretty much when they land, they're going to be able to see this path winding its way up. Um, along the cliff edge so I'm not too worried about them being able to see the whole map at the beginning as long as they can't see all of the characters that are going to be on there. All right so uh, there is an encounter that happens just down here off the left when the players first try to beach which involves some zombies. Now slightly frustrating is the fact that this map doesn't really include enough space for that so we've got a couple of choices. We can either cram the zombie encounter uh, down here and, and put our zombies down here for the battle, or we can use a completely separate map and, and find one that's going to work for us um, and put the zombie encounter on that, which is probably a better suggestion. Or the other option is to not use a battle map for that encounter. Uh, and do that just purely theatre of the mind. It's not supposed to be particularly dangerous. There's only a couple of zombies. Um, it's supposed to just start off the sort of the adventure with this is not this is not the safe place you possibly thought it was. So uh, I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm going to do that adventure. And for my guys, for my party, when they arrive, they're going to be under slightly different cir different circumstances. I'm not going to need that introductory battle to kind of get them oh blimey we've had our very first combat they will be quite seasoned by the time we get here okay now this is a village it's full of people so what we need to do is basically populate it with that npcs uh, and then it's almost done so um what we got on this bit here so this the, on the path and monastic cells it talks about the long paths up the rocky shores um at 30 feet above the bay it widens into a long plaza um, and halfway along the plaza, a stone statue of a dragon gazes, so that's this, uh, this bit right here, uh, gazes serenely down the path. Six open doorways are cut into the cliff. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it says they're open doorways, which means they're not, they're suggesting there aren't doors there. Um, should we put walls on this map? Um, yeah, I think we should, because otherwise line of sight, if we put character in here, they're going to be able to see that straight away. So I don't think it's a big deal. We don't need to be particularly... Again, this is this is supposed to be an NPC type of area. Um, we, we're not expecting the, the players to, um, to get into fights in here. They might do, because I don't know about your players, but uh, my players do all sorts of things I'm not expecting them to do. Which, of course, is absolutely fine. That's that's the whole part of the game. Uh, I certainly don't want to railroad them. I don't want to do them like that. I've changed my mind. Get rid of that. Too many walls. That's not actually adding anything here because of the nature of this place. So, um, let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of all of them. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is just have a wall like this. A simple wall that just cuts off the vision. Don't need to be particularly concerned about. Uh, can I? Yep. Don't need to be particularly concerned about them. 
uh, you know, it being perfect or anything like that. I don't think that's going to add anything for this. Stick that down there, just over there. Does it make much difference? No, I don't think it does at all. Um, I think the only thing is, is when some scenes start to get really complicated, you potentially have the problem with some, um, you know, some slow up. I can't imagine that's going to be much of an issue. Certainly not on this map. There's just not enough on here for that to be something to worry about, to be honest. But probably good practice to consider those things while we're going along. Okay. Bring that out a little bit. Okay, so that's fine. I'm happy with that. They can't actually see what's inside those cells at all. Uh, do I need to worry about them doing this up the up the path? They can, you know. No, they can certainly look up this cliff face and they can see that that's there. What I do want to do though is just, again, make sure they're not just looking, staring into the temple and seeing who's in there when they are in fact quite a long distance away. So okay, again, we're going to go just around here. And in fact, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave that bit open because that's the winch. So this winch house is where the basket gets lowered down um, for supplies, for people, whatever it might be to get winched up uh, to the higher levels rather than having to do all the steps. So they would be able to see through there. That's absolutely fine. Stick that in there. Um, in fact, I don't even need that wall. I'm going to come straight across from here. Down to there. Let's dip that one over there. All right, what about over here? Yep, again. Don't need to worry about the front, I don't think. I don't think that's a problem at all. But I'm just going to put a bit of a wall around here as well okay so i think that will work so what i'm going to do is um we'll go through and put the npcs on etc and then once we've done that then we can um, have a quick check to make sure the map makes sense from the player's eye view because that's really important that we we check that um, and as i said before what we are going to do once this is all complete which will be not very far off at all now um then we can get a player character to log in and get them to explore the maps just check things like walls are correct lighting those sounds last video we talked about the volume of some of those sounds just check that we're happy with all of those things okay dokey right so this path and monastic area down here um have we got any particular npcs it says about drugging in it talks about the statue it talks about the cells the westernmost cell is vacant um so it talks about this one being vacant here. Um, it is available if the characters don't mind sharing the space. Well, it depends how big the party is. That's so <laughs> it could be squished. Uh, next to it is Tarax cell and Varnoths. Now they're not going to be just in their in their um, their bedrooms the entire time. So let's not put it in here. Uh, this clutter cell belongs to Myla or Mela. Um, and the fifth and sixth are strung with hammocks. So these are hammocks, these things you can see here, these bits here, that's pretty much shared for a whole bunch of um, the other kobolds. Now in the winch house, it talks about what the winch house actually is. That's this one up here. Um, it's just a winch that lowers. It doesn't talk about who might be in here. Uh, the kitchen, this is the kitchen with its dining area by the looks of it. Um, they share three, da three daily meals here, take turns in cooking and cleaning up afterwards. It sounds all very nice. Um, they prefer, their favorite days are when Tarek cooks. Okay, well, that's fine. We haven't put Tarek in yet. Uh, the next one is the library. Uh, it's quite an extensive library, isn't it? Considering they've got very little features here, basically some bedrooms, a kitchen, and a library of doom. Uh, so the cloister holds books, scrolls, variety of topics. Um, Tarak and Varnoth also come here to read and discuss various works. Many of the kobolds visit as well. So it might be some of the kobolds are here. Um, only Myla could be described as studious. Okay, so we get to them in a minute. And then we've got the temple, which is the last location. And this talks about, um, that talks about the statue here in the middle and it's got some abilities. But it also talks about the leader of this area. Uh, Ruana, or Ruana, who is a uh, disguised 
huge dragon. So, um, so that's interesting. So we've got a huge metallic dragon, but is in, not in um, dragon form. So uh, just skipping on, see what it tells us about the inhabitants, uh, meeting the inhabitants. So Elder Ruan, uh, Ranara, Ranara, that's what we're going with. Some of the names are kind of difficult to know how they wanted to put them. She appears as a human woman. So she's the leader of Dragon's Rest. Uh, she's actually an adult bronze dragon in disguised form. She guides the residents of the cloister in their contemplation and study. So she generally spends most of her time here. So we're going to need a new NPC, aren't we? We've got monsters um, and everything else. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to take this adult bronze dragon. I'm going to move it into NPCs. I'm going to double click this. Now remember, this is going to update this character sheet. Um, or rather, yeah, update this monster for my version of the game. Any changes I make here will then uh, carry over um, to any tokens I drop down. So at the moment, if I pop this on the map, this is going to give me the adult bronze dragon. There is a possibility, I can't imagine how badly the adventure would need to go, but there's a possibility of them returning um, to this form. So I think what I want to do is for the prototype icon, I want to leave these stats. So I've got these stats handy if I need them, but obviously we do not want it looking like an adult bronze dragon. So the token name is actually going to be Renara. Um, display name only when hovered over by the owner, so by the DM. Um, append the name of unlinked tokens. No, no, don't want to do any of that. Don't want to do any of that. Um, neutral token disposition doesn't make a huge amount of difference. But appearance, this is where I want to change the image. So we need to select a new image here. I'm going to go back up the menu systems, uh, out the systems, into my shipwreck aisle, my misnamed one, into my token images. And this is where I'm going to upload a new one, choose file, come out of here, and NPCs. Weirdly enough, the character that I've been running around with is actually using the icon that I had selected to have as Renara. So Renara is a human uh, and I've got her as a an el more uh, a more mature lady, let's put it that way. Okay, um, anything else we want to change on here? Mirror image? No, we don't need to change that. Vision? Uh, don't need to invable vision. That's all fine. Is she going to emit light? No, she's not. Uh, and resources? Um, that's fine. So I'm going to update token. So now when I drop her into here, <laughs> it didn't do what I was expecting, did it? Um, but that's, why, why is that? Why, what did I do? What did I do? Prototype token, appearance. It hasn't changed that image path. Hmm. Let's try that again. Not sure why that didn't work. I was expecting it to. I obviously, prob I obviously missed something. So Elder Ranara select that token, update that token. Now if I drop it in, hooray! I mean, it's made a huge because it's based on the, on the size. So um, we can change this, that's not a problem. Uh, appearance, dimensions, grid spaces, three by three. No, it's one by one. She's human size, thank you very much. Uh, oh, right, look, scale. Let's bring it back to scale one. There we go. Update. Whee! Right. There we go. <laughs> That's the size we want her to be. Okay. But um, when we double click on her and we see her stats, we can see we've got all of those dragon stats that we need. So that's great. The other players will have no idea that she's anything other than an old lady, which is brilliant. Okay. So um, that's great. She tends to hang around here which is fine. Uh, the kobolds, lots of kobolds here. Uh, da, 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 da. So first of all, one of the kobolds is Aga, speaks little, uh, speaks little, has no patience. She keeps the rest of the kobolds organized and in line. She's indifferent towards visitors. If they show her respect, um, she can change to become friendly. So we need, a, uh, we need to put kobolds into our NPCs. Uh, I've got them up here. It doesn't matter. Some of them, it doesn't matter where we've got them. 
Um, but I think what I want to do is to. I'm gonna. I uh, know. I'm just gonna drop this in. I'm just gonna drop her in. Decide where I'm going to have her. Maybe she's in the library to start with. Okay. And I did download a couple of other tokens, so I'm gonna left click on this one. Um, we can see that she's a kobold, so I'm just gonna change the name of. Remember, this is going to change the name of the token, not the monster or the, the monster stat block. So, Aga, I'm going to pop in here. I'm going to save that. That's fine. Um, and when we hover over it, it says Cobold because I've updated the character, but I haven't. Uh, yeah, this is the one. This is the one I want to change. Okay. That's better. Uh, so, Appearance. Uh, I can change the image token if I want to. So I did to have a look at some other tokens that we might want to use for some of these, just to add a bit of variety when you've got lots of different kobolds and things. So if I choose a file, I've got this kobold with fire, I've got this kobold um, and a couple of others that I put in. I've got a couple of winged ones because some of these kobolds are winged. Um, so I'm going to stick with the default one for this one. I failed to update it again, didn't I? Uh, identity, yep, I forgot to say press update token. There we go, so that's Aga. Uh, the next one, bl uh, Blep, As a sharp, uh, has a sharp danger sense of Finst. He's supernaturally lucky. His prized possession is an ordinary dagger that he claims to be magical. All right, so we want to dump another another kobold in. Now, I think it's fair to say that some of these kobolds will be, they'll just be all over the place, won't they? Um, so let's dump him down here for the moment. So double right click. I'm going to change this to say that is blep. Okay, so there we go. Blep, easy peasy. Uh, Frob has limitless energy and desperately needs to find something productive um, or help. Sorry, desperately needs help finding productive directions to channel it. He loves to ask questions about everything other people are doing. So if he's really, really curious, my suggestion would be he's going to be wanting to be down here and meeting these new arrivals probably quite early on. Um, yeah, loves to ask questions. Yeah, what's going on? Who are you? What are you doing here? All of that kind of stuff. Uh, Kilnip has terrible insomnia, sleeps only a few hours a day. She's always tired, but in an eager conversationalist. Okay, so we're going to dump uh, Kilnip somewhere. Uh, we can dump Kilnip uh, up here in the kitchen for now. Double right click straight into here. We can update this. Kilnip. Easy peasy. Uh, next one is... Laylee, curious mind and talent for tools and building. She serves as Myla's helper. We haven't got to Myla yet. So Myla, is, who's a couple down, is a winged kobold. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, so we want to put, where are we going to put Myla, who is a kobold tinkerer? Um, why don't we put Myla... Uh, and therefore, Laylee, uh, why don't we put them in the winch house? They can be in the winch house for now. So let's pop this one down, change the name. This is going to be Laylee. And of course, these, these creatures are going to move around. All the kobolds are going to move around as the player characters are there. They're going to gather for dinner. They're going to um, possibly, in some cases, follow the players around a little bit. All right, that's Laylee. Um, Mumpo, audaciously courageous. Um, he stole a copper piece from Rana's hoard. <sighs> Ooh, he's convinced she has no idea. Um, okay, so it doesn't tell us a lot about Mumpo. Um, so we can stick Mumpo wherever we like. Uh, I'm going to stick Mumpo... Uh, I'm going to stick Mumpo up here as well. No, in fact, I'm going to stick Mumpo over here in the library area. I want to double left click, I want to double right click. Uh, and it was Mumpo. Interesting name. So we've got Mumpo there. All right, now we've got uh, Myla. Now Myla is a winged kobold. So uh, I've got winged kobold here. 
um, because they've got the different stats. If you recall, we changed those last time. So I'm going to dump this in here, but this has the horrible token that I, I personally don't like. So I'm going to double right click this. I'm going to change this to say that this is Mailer, um, which is fine. But also appearance, I'm going to change this image path. I'm going to go back up to my shipwreck aisle, my token images. I'm going to choose file and I'm going to choose uh, one of these. Okay, so I'm going to use that one there, update token. Now, again, we had this with the Myconids where the default, because it's not a PNG file, it's got that white background. But none of these are tokened in the way that we want them to be, not really. If we look at our player character down here, it's, again, it's just the square. Um, these, whether it's a PNG file, uh, we've got the invisible background. Um, this one where it's not a PNG, we've got that. So they don't look nice. They don't look like tokens as we might want them to. They don't stand out very well. We will sort that when we use our first add-on. Well, let's get the whole thing finished first and we'll come back and do that. Okay, so um, duh, 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 it says, uh, right, so next one is Riss, Rick's pious and tends to the temple. Okay, so whoops, uh, we'll move all the way over here to the temple. We want to dump in another kobold here. And this one is going to be called uh, Rix, R-I-X. Update that token, easy peasy. And then we've got Zark. Zark is rude and fond of colourful insults. Good role-playing opportunity. His favourites are Eat My Saw, Bugbear Breath. That's not particularly the uh, <laughs> offensive, is it? And your father was a gas spore. He's indifferent towards visitors. So we can shove him anywhere we like, really. So uh, let's shove him over here and just stick him in the library for now. That's fine. Uh, we might move some of these in a minute. So you are Zark. And we've got you. Uh, now we've only got a couple of people left. So Tarak, who is a human here. Uh, so Tarak is a human. Um, late middle age, pale skin, tanned dark leather. Um, an avid botanist. He tends the cloisters garden plots growing flowers, herbs, and vegetables. So is it obvious where those garden plots are? Because uh, it doesn't appear to be any shown on the map. Don't you love it when they do that? But that's fine, because we can make that up. We can do whatever we like with it. Um, he's softly spoken, eager to share his knowledge about herbalism, kindly de uh, de more, uh, demeanor. Um, he's initially friendly towards visitors, etc. He's also one of the ones that hands out um, a quest uh, so he's somebody who's going to be quite useful to us. So we're going to shove him somewhere down here. We're going to assume that some of these garden plots are right here on the coast where this is a bit wider. Um, and there's actually some availability to do that rather than the only other place really is going to be kind of in the temple and this exposed outcrop. Um, I'm not sure that that's could be in this case I don't think that's that's appropriate. So we're going to stick him down here. Now we don't actually have him on here yet. But he's, he's basically human. So let's go to our compendium packs, our SID, SRD. Um, well, let's look under monsters and see if we've just got a human. Just a human. We haven't. Okay, that's fine. We don't need to worry about it too much. Now, if we're going to assume that we're not going to get into combat, um, that's easy. Let's just create one. Let's create an actor. This actor is called, let me make sure I spell his name right. Yep, it is Tarak. Uh, he is a non-player character, um, and we're going to pop him in NPCs. And we create him. Here he is. Now, I have, again, I want to make sure, it's already in token images, I'm going to upload, and as you can see, I already downloaded, or created, um, I, use some, um, I use some AI to generate an image for this one. Um, so I've used that one for him here. Now, obviously, we can update some of his basic stats. So in the other window, again, I've got the adventure there. I can do that, and I can tell you that he's got a 10, a 16, which is very impressive for uh, uh, effectively a nobody, uh, and a 16 charisma and wisdom. So, yeah, he's not just any old uh, any old person, is he? Okay, uh, hit points-wise, he should have 27, so let's give him his full health. None of this, hopefully, becomes relevant unless they end up getting into a big fight with the NPCs. If you are running this as intended as a very um, very early introduction for players, and it's their first game, um, 
things might go awry they might do all sorts of weird things hopefully they don't manage to get themselves into combat remember rana here is actually a full adult dragon so there is no real threat from the player characters to this sanctuary to this to this town um that doesn't mean that the players can't necessarily cause a bit of trouble but the chances of tarak actually getting into combat and being killed is quite small so i probably don't need to worry too much about filling in all his stats i would want to role play him out of any of those kind of issues so it talks about things he can do he can do a common dranic draconic rather so let's make sure we put those in we want common he can also speak draconic um, but he also has the thieves cant so let's put that in as well just because uh yeah he can communicate potentially if the party's got a thief they can talk if they want to um he's got a multi-attack with a dagger again i'm not going to really worry about that i don't think that's a big issue at all um should we pop that in there in the srd if i look for items just find a normal dagger i can chuck it in over here there it is so it already comes with we set a couple of these up ourselves it comes with you know the fact that it's identified equipped it's a light weapon it can be thrown it's got all of the the things in here and it's got the d4 plus his modifier in there as well so he's pretty much he's good to go so i'm just going to leave him as is um let's get rid of that srd uh, and i've got him over here on the left hand side now and now i can chuck him wherever i want him um, and he's going to be a full square looking like that all right so we're not far off of having this scene done already i know it doesn't take long this one um, mostly because we're not doing lots with lighting we haven't got lots of monsters we haven't got magical bridges and everything else okay the next one is varnoth muscular human black hairs cropped close to her scalp um, my image isn't quite match that but that's fine um so where are we going to find her um it was head of a, merc of a mercenary company da, 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 da. reflective contemplation at dragon's rest she's she's gruff but observant and empathetic um she's indifferent to visitors uh da, 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 da. yeah okay so it doesn't really tell us where to, where to put her but i'm going to put her over here in the temple okay she's going to spend a lot of her time in the temple uh, contemplating now again um we don't have a we don't we don't have an actor for that so we can just create one oops um, excuse me trashing something on my desk and her name was varnoth we're going to make her a non-player character we're going to put her in the non-player character folder there we go she's called varnoth want to find my image again got one downloaded here she is doesn't match the description in the book but i don't really care about that um you know she is who she is uh again we do want to update her stats just in case somebody does something stupid it does happen so we're looking at a 16 strength uh, a 13 a 14 a 10 11 and a 10 down here uh we are looking at an arm class of 11 yes we are she's going to have a movement of uh, of 30 feet so we need to put that in so we can move her around 39 whoops 39 hit points there so she's quite she's quite tough if the party's first level um yeah she's going to be tough to take on just by herself again hopefully they won't do that uh languages wise she can only speak common that's her only uh, only language uh she's actually a challenge rating of two um <laughs> loads 450 xp if they decide stupidly to take her on uh, and she has a short sword so let's go back to our srd let's go back to our items over here instead of dagger if we type in short it's going to give us a whole bunch of stuff i'm going to chuck in a short sword um, there we go so even though i chucked it on the tribute thing because i dropped it on the character sheet it's put it straight in here for us so she's not wearing any armor or anything but she's got a short sword um and there we go all right so all that's left to do go back to my actors she's over here and we can come and drop her in the temple um all right so what do we need to do else here i think one of the things i would like to do is just have a quick check through some of these locations 
Um, is there anything I particularly need to, feels worth adding on here? Um, I don't think there is actually. I think it's about, I think running this is mostly about having an idea of who these individuals are, um, a little bit of personality of them, and then trying to run them in a way that kind of, um, you know, makes sense and brings this place to life. So what we could do to to do exactly that, let's, uh, where did we put, where did we put Zark? Um, Zark was up here. So if I double click on Zark to bring Zark up, so the token says Zark, even though the character sheet just says Cobold, I'm going to change that to say Zark as well, just so if I've got it open, I know which one I'm looking at. Because here's an idea of what we could do. So I could copy straight from the module in this instance, rather than looking it up, and I could go into biography uh, and thank you for the token artwork, and I could just copy that in there. So what that means is, is when they are talking to this character, if I want, I can just open that, go to the blog finger, oh yeah, that's right, rude and fond of colorful insults. I can absolutely do that, no problem. So that's one way I could do that to make that a bit more interesting, remind myself when they're talking to multiple characters, how to change them. And of course, for significant NPCs that are going to talk more about, I might put a hint in there about their mannerisms. Um, so with my campaign uh, for Vandalin, um, you've got Gundren the Dwarf, and I've given him a particular accent, and I've given him, like, he t tends to tug his beard a lot. Um, and, you know, some people sort of tend to say, uh, 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 a lot as they're talking, or they scratch, or whatever it might be. And you can put in those kind of bits of colour just to help define the difference between all of these kobolds that kind of look the same. Okay, um... So what we could do is we could change a couple of these images. I did download a couple of different, as I said, a couple of different uh, images for kobolds, and currently they all look the same. So why don't we, uh, let's look at Kilnip, go to appearance, look at those tokens. Um, I'm in my token folder, uh, and I might just choose that one. Apply that token. So it just looks different. Just kind of mixes it up a little bit. These guys are currently together. Let's change the image token. Um, let's take that one. Again, we know that their to tokens are not great when they've got the white background, but we're going to look at that later and see what we can do. Uh, it just, yeah, it just adds a bit of variety. Not everybody's the same, you know, because you know one of the players will make a comment about, you know, I can't tell the kobolds apart. They all look the same as a somewhat tongue-in-cheek uh, comment. Okay, so anything else we need to do at Dragon's Rest? We've got weather. We've got our NPCs in, um, where we could add a lot more detail to the NPCs if we wanted to, and certainly if we didn't have the module sitting on the other screen, we would definitely be doing that. Um, let's have a little check with our character. Just check our walls are working from this point of view. We can walk all the way up here and as we get to these places that don't have doors, we could put doors on, but I'm not going to. Remember, these are kobolds that live here. They don't necessarily need or feel the need for doors. So we can see these kobolds here as we're wandering around. If we go into this room here, we can't see them anymore, which is good. It's exactly what we want. Um, we can see everything going on in the wheelhouse from up here. And this is, see, this is a bit odd because we are significantly lower, yet we're seeing up the cliff and then into the room. Doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't matter. I could put a wall across here to stop that, I suppose. Um, just to block that vision so they can't see where the path is when they're below it. Does it matter? Do I care? I'm wondering if I care or not. <laughs> I'm not sure if I care. Um... I think I, I think I care enough just to put that little bit of extra detail in just to just to stop that being quite so um, yeah quite so, quite so silly so you're not going to be able to see what's on that path necessarily from below um, you're not going to be able to see what's up there necessarily from below um, I think it's fair to say you probably yeah, I think that's probably all you need, really. You might put one in there just to... Oh, dear. 
all over the place. Just so it makes a little bit more sense. Again, let's pop back to our character to see what difference that makes. So yeah, we can see the whole map because we've got all the lights on, which is fine. But we can't see what's in those top rooms from now, from here, uh, unless we actually head up here. Whoops. If we head all the way up the stairs, now we can see along here, but it's not until we're on that level that we can start seeing those and we can't see what's around this corner until we head around these steps here and then we can see the people at the temple if they're within view. I think that makes a lot more sense. I just It just feels better. Um, that's, that's my feelings on it. I'm going to move this one down here. I'm going to move, uh, I'm, actually I'm not, I'm gonna move you and have you right by the statue. Um, I'm gonna have you here and you here as well. These guys are hanging about there. These two are in the winch house doing whatever. Now remember, um, was it um, Myla was the one who is the tinkerer, the winged one who's a tinkerer. So, you know, they might be tinkering in the wheelhouse and Laylee tends to hang around as well. Okay, so we've got um, most of the action here is going to be role playing, conversations, um, issuing of quests. Um, so a very key character is going to be this chap down here, Tarak, um, who gives them the quest for Seagrow Caves. Um, any of the rest of the kobolds and things can talk about the, uh, the shipwreck and send them off to the shipwreck to investigate and find out, see if they can find out what's happened. And it's not until they've done those two things before um, Renara, I've got to remember her name, uh, Renara, uh, will give them the key and ask them to investigate the observatory. So that's the three main things. All right, so what else is there left to do for this adventure to run it? Uh, not a lot. There really isn't. Uh, right at the very beginning, in the f I think it was in the very first video of this series, we talked about the fact that there are some random encounters um, that are spread across the island. There, I, think there was, uh, I think there was three of them. Uh, Hot Springs Havoc... Uh, they're there, Owl Bear, uh, and Cobbled Renegades. Oh, and what lies beneath? There was four of them. Um, the adventure doesn't come with maps for that, so we can make those up as um, encounters. We can do it as um, in the theatre of the mind and not necessarily have a map and, and a counter for it. And sometimes that's a really good thing to do for your players is to get them using their brains to create the scenes and things, especially for random encounters that can be quite short. So we could go on develop all those scenes in the potential of using them. I think what I want to do, because I'm going to be using this as part of a much bigger campaign setting, and I want my players to potentially return to this island anytime they like, if they choose to. Um, they might make good contacts here. They might come for advice and things um, from Ranara. Um, I want them to return here. So for me, I'm going to have, if I go back to my scenes, um, I've got Clifftop Observatory, Compass Rose, Dragon's Rest. I've got all of these in here. I am more most likely to dump all of these into one folder called Storm Wreck Isle. Um, and then have another folder which has got probably Fandolin in it. Um, for at least part one of Fandolin. And then the, um, the uh, Obelisk part of Fandolin as a separate one probably. Because I'm planning to split that adventure into two with this one thrown in the middle. Uh, and I'll probably have a um, a folder that has a whole bunch of individual encounters. So um, encounter maps and things like that where I've created those. And I'll probably put things like what lies beneath um, there, there, owlbear and things into that. And then I can use them anytime I want, anywhere. Uh, and all I know is, oh, I've got a random encounter. What will it be? I can go to that folder and pull that out regardless of whether they are in the middle of this adventure, a different adventure, they've wandered off somewhere else, because I want them to have the freedom to go where they like. But if they come, when they come to Stormwreck Isle, if they choose to accept the mission and come to Stormwreck Isle, um, then everything here is ready for them to go and they can follow this through in a logical order. Of course, something to bear in mind, when you've got an adventure like this, 
uh, just pull out where we've got an adventure like this currently my players are over here to the top right uh, they might come here to you know come to dragon's rest if they already know that their goal is to get to the clifftop observatory to look for something specific they may forego these encounters completely uh, they may go, well, let's take a boat and find the observatory. They may use magic or uh, scrying or something like that to find where the observatory is and basically go straight there. Um, and if we go back to the observatory, remember um, that in the observatory, what we let's uh, make that light again. Uh, in the observatory, we've got all these little lines and islands and things. But if they can fly or they could climb in cliffs or they've got grapple hooks or whatever it might be, there is no reason for them to need the key to activate these bridges. Does it ruin the adventure? Um, it does. But does it ruin their story? No. Which is far, far more important is that the, the, their story continues and makes sense, even if they've circumvented half the adventure is that really frustrating as a dm hell yeah it is it's very annoying when they just chop a whole bunch of your hard work out but they might come back another time and visit the seagrove caves is this wasted i don't think this is wasted that's it, it's not something i consider to be wasted time at all um we just see but it's creating all of these things ready for them Okay, so I'm going to bring this particular video to a close. Uh, we now have the Clifftop Observatory, we have Dragon's Rest, uh, we have the Seagrow Caves and the Compass Rose. This is pretty much ready to go. We could run this. The thing that is going to stop us from running this at the moment is the fact that there are, yeah, yeah, we can update the tokens and things like that with an add-on, but we haven't created our player characters yet. Um, and so... In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating, properly creating our first character for this game. Um, and we might create one of the NPCs that come with the adventure. So there is somebody to actually play that and wander around and have a look. Um, so we'll create a character first. Then we will have a look at getting them to join the game um, and wander around each of the maps um, and check them all out that way. So that'd be a bit of an audit, that one. Creating our first character, auditing everything. Um, and then we can look at our very first couple of add-ons that we might want to use to make that better. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, give us a like. Leave a comment below if you've got any suggestions, things you think that could be improved uh, without add-ons at this stage. That would be great. Let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.